Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday. I'm Denise Pass with Seeing Deep Ministries, where we see deep in a shallow world by overcoming the battle of the mind with the Word of God. And we're reading from 1 Peter 4 and 5 today, and we're talking about a subject I'm sure we all love, suffering. How do you handle suffering? I don't think it's something that we would seek out, right? Like, hey, me, 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 I volunteer for suffering. And yet, it is suffering that can be the very tool that enables us to stop living for sin and to live fully for God. There's a perspective from suffering that is not easily gained, but those who see it understand the blessing that suffering brings into one's life. <laughs> It's really windy outside. If you notice me looking, I'm like, wow. <clears throat> anyway, let's read a little bit from 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same understanding. Because the one who suffers in the flesh is finished with sin. In order to live the remaining time in the flesh, no longer for human desires but for God's will. For there has already been enough time spent in doing what the Gentiles choose to do, carrying on in unrestrained behavior, evil desires, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and lawless idolatry. They are surprised that you don't join them in the same flood of wild living. And they slander you. They will give an account to the one who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. I think sometimes it's hard for us to see. We get myopic. Suffering helps bring clarity back again. And so there's a perspective from suffering and it has to do, we access it by our attitude. And so it is our attitude that determines how we walk through suffering. In my recent COVID hospitalization, I could have easily given in to the fear or the discouragement. But those emotions propelled me toward fighting and arming myself with the mind of Christ and digging deeply into God's Word. I knew I could not fight the fight alone. I had a lot of prayer warriors that blew me away, but I also made a choice in that place, and that was by the grace of God. I cried out. I realized I, this fight was too big for me, and so I knew that suffering required something more of me. Suffering is not just about a person being strong. You know, a good attitude will not get us through. So what do I mean by attitude? Well, we were just reading that. Hey there, Janice. Our mindset is renewed when we seek to adopt Christ's mindset rather than our own. How do we do that? Well, you know, one way is we read God's word and we recognize and see how Christ responded. And we pray and ask God to help us do the same. We, instead of the thoughts that we have in our mind that might feel forgotten or forsaken by God, we choose to think on the truth. And so ultimately it is admitting our weaknesses and relying on God that makes us strong. And in the midst of suffering, there can be a reliance on God that sets us free from whatever else we were relying on. Notice I say the words can be. We get to let that happen if we access God in the midst of our suffering and his word. We have a choice. Hey there, Susan, friend, good to see you. So suffering does not have to defeat us and surrender to the Lord is victory. This is the irony, it's opposite what we think. Sometimes people try to be macho and tough. I've got this, you know. No, I don't got this. <laughs> I need Jesus. Hey there, Ann, yay, good to see you, friend. And so we can't do it in our own strength. Sorrow and hardship and suffering, they're hard. But God is enough. He is our sufficiency. So let's look at a perspective from suffering. Let's look at gifts that we gain. Paul said that those who arm themselves with the understanding that we will have struggles in this world, this is the scriptures I read at the beginning, um, and arm themselves with Christ's attitude and the word of God, gain these gifts from suffering. They're finished with sin. Now, when I say that, you say, okay, jolly good, I won't ever sin again. No, but I bet, depending on the level of your suffering, you are not going to be quick 
to rush back in to sin. There's a humbling that occurred in that place of suffering that opened your eyes too to realize all this stuff doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And I would say that we can drift from that place, even though we may have learned a lot, we can drift again as comfort becomes an idol and it settles in again. But there's a perspective that suffering brings that has a lasting impression. We're not so motivated anymore by the things this world has to offer us. And they also live for God's will, not sinful human desires. And then they stay on mission. They have peace. There is a peace when we can see things clearly and no longer live just for the comforts of this world. Our eyes are open and God is our rock. You know, I just had a realization. <coughs> I think I quoted Paul at the beginning, but this is Peter. <laughs> okay? I, I'm still having issues. But anyway, uh, what incredible truths here. And another perspective from suffering, how to handle it and how not to handle it. Let's read from 1 Peter 4, 12-14. Dear friends, don't be surprised. Now that's hard. Suffering usually takes us by surprise. When the fiery ordeal comes among you to test you as if something unusual were happening to you. You see, suffering is usual in a fallen world. Instead, rejoice as you share in the sufferings of Christ so that you may also rejoice with great joy when his glory is revealed. <coughs> if you are ridiculed for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. And so I take this scripture passage there. Hey there, Diana. And don't be taken aback by suffering. Don't doubt God's goodness in that place. That's the first thing Satan wants to do is accuse God in your own eyes. Don't let it throw you into worldly thinking. It's hard. But we can take captive those thoughts. And we can ask God to help us have the mind of Christ. And instead, Peter challenges us to choose joy in that place. You might be persecuted. People might mock you, but God, he will bless you for it. I think if we think eternally and not temporarily, suffering will not last forever, <clears throat> but our redemption and peace will be in heaven. You can see my asthma is trying to get me right now, but we're going to persevere. <clears throat> the scripture of the day is out of 1 Peter 4.19. So then, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust themselves to a faithful creator while doing what is good. Do we trust God when we suffer? Really trust him? Suffering messes with our mind. But we don't have to let that happen. We can choose to think on God's word and response to suffering and see what God accomplished in Christ and through Christ and what he'll accomplish in and through us. Suffering is never wasting. And so finally, some final strategies during suffering. <clears throat> First Peter 5 verses 6 through 11. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your cares on him because he cares about you. Be sober-minded, be alert. <clears throat> Goodness, I'm sorry. <clears throat> your adversary the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour, resist him. Standing firm in the faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your fellow believers throughout the world. The God of this grace, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, establish, strengthen, strengthen and support you after you have suffered a little while. To him, the dominion forever. Amen. So final application I learned just from that passage is be humble. It's hard. We want to blame someone. We want to maybe complain. I've definitely had some pity moments myself, even in recent times as different things continue on. And you just want to be done, you know, done with the suffering. But if we don't accuse or blame and we accept it as discipline from a loving father, now that sounds twisted to our minds. But he promises to use it for our good and his glory. And Hebrews 12, 7 says it is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? 
And so no discipline seems pleasant at the time, rather painful, but later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness for those who have been trained by it. And that one's from the book of James. So pour out your cares and concerns to Jesus. Don't complain, but cry out to God for grace and strength. His grace is sufficient for us all. And be so reminded, don't cave to sin just because life is hard. Press into God and his word and find strength. God promises, he promises to restore us after we have suffered. You guys, go with God. And I pray right now, if any of you are suffering in any way, to reach for that grace of God, that we will glorify God in that suffering. If you look at Philippians, I'm writing a devotion on that uh, right now for the first five app. <clears throat> Man, I actually just wrote a paper on Philippians 1 this past week for college, and so God evidently has me there. But <clears throat> Paul, which is why I said Paul at the beginning of this, was telling us that suffering was something, and it was an opportunity for him to proclaim Christ, to live as Christ, to die as gain. And so may God help us to honor him in all suffering. You guys, go with God, and Lord will, we'll catch you tomorrow. Bye-bye.